What's up guys, it's your favorite Kiwi coach. I'll give you six months of your time, I'll give you the best golf swing. So welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we are going to be doing another athletic motion golf video. In this particular one, they are talking about the driver, the number one tip that you need to know to become a better driver of the golf ball. So if you're really interested in the driver swing, this is the perfect video for you. Let's go ahead and jump in. But before we get into the video, I wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor, and that is Kiwi Golf Japan. If you did not know, YouTube does not pay the bills. So if you wanna help support this YouTube channel, down below, after the video is over, there'll be a link down there. Go ahead and click on that. They'll lead you to our Kiwi Platinum membership site. Once you guys sign up, it does really help support this channel and you get access to a bunch of great videos. So with that out of the way, let's get into the driver with Athletic Motion Golf. Sean, you've got to do one thing at, at least competently, preferably really well if you really want to enjoy playing this game. Absolutely, and I've heard it said a lot of times from a lot of smart people, if you can't drive, you can't play. You can't get off the tee, this game becomes very so let's stop it there. So as you can tell, this particular video is going to be about the driver. Now, before they start to get further into the video, I do want to explain maybe the format that they're about to talk about. So one of the main concepts they want to talk about is they went to one of these instructors who is known for teaching the driver in America. And one of the interesting points that they picked up was going to be kind of where the club shaft should be at impact. Should there be a handle first or should there not? So they're going to bring up that point and give you their opinions on that particular point. But then from there, they're going to move forward and then they're going to start to get into more so kind of iron versus driver and they're going to be using gears and they're going to be using a professional golfer in that and then you can start to see the differences and similarities between irons and drivers as well and then also it's just going to give you some you know really basic good information on what you should be doing with the driver after that they start to get into more so of a drill to where okay we gave you this information how do you actually go ahead and do that and then once we get through all those parts, I'm going to start giving you my personal opinion and start adding to this video because I think there's a lot of points that they could have expanded on. So I will definitely expand on those points and give you guys some more value. So with that out of the way, let's start getting into the first part of the video where they do bring up that specific thing they learned from that one golf instructor. Of what it takes to drive the ball really well. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to share with you in this video. It's if you can do this, it makes up for a lot of sins that may have happened before that. Yeah, and, you know, we've had a lot of videos on setup, and we know that we like to have the club on a swing plane, mm -hmm. right? Good grip, mm -hmm. all important, good sequence. But really, in the end, the essence of good driving all comes down to where this club is aligned at impact, mm -hmm. where the face is pointed, hit it in the middle of the face. And I think the, the takeaway from this video is where do we want this shaft aligned at impact? Because we know a lot of golfers are obsessed with shaft length. Yes. You know, and it's all always talked about with irons, right? Let's get the shaft forward, let's get the shaft forward. And I think a lot of guys sometimes come in with the idea they need to be doing the same thing with the drop. So if you haven't caught it already, the main point that they learned from that one instructor who's known for driver was, where should the shaft be at impact? And they're about to get to the delivery point here, so I won't root it for them, I'll allow them to say it, but this is something we also see with a lot of our clients as well. They see these tour pros have handle first with irons, taking these beautiful divots, and then even maybe with driver, it appears like those pros have a lot of handle first with driver as well. So naturally, when they're hitting the driver, that's exactly what they're working on. Like, I need to get more handle first, because that's gonna help me get more ball speed, it's gonna help me hit the ball further, because that's what the pros do, should I should do it. So what they're about to talk about now may just debunk that motion right there or that thinking process right there. So let's go ahead and jump into that. There we go. Right. There, there, are basically, there are basically two clubs in the bag that you want to deliver pretty much with a vertical shaft, right? Yeah. And they're both ends of the, of the, of the hole, right. your putter and your driver. It's a great there you go. So they just broke that myth right there. So a lot of the great drivers, when they actually hit the golf ball, the amount of handle first or shaft lean amount <laughs> very very minimal and most of them actually probably have zero or maybe not or actually having the handle slightly late when it comes to impact so let me explain so let's say your static loft on your driver is right around 10 degrees well most pros when they actually hit the ball the loft that they present to the ball is close to like 14 degrees 15 degrees if they're hitting up on the golf ball so that means that they're adding more loft than they had at statically when they hit the golf ball, which simply means you cannot have handle first and be able to do that unless you hit some type of sky ball, right? Which is what they don't do, they're pro golfers, they hit in the sweet spot. So as you can see, all great players, when it comes to handle first amounts with driver at impact, very, very minimal or maybe zero or maybe even slightly handle late, that is definitely the case there. So now that you guys got that understanding, let's jump forward to when they start talking with the player, the pro golfer on gears, and you can start to start 
You'll see the difference between some irons and some driver swings. Let's get into that. Flight now. And what you can look for in our drills when we come back after that. Here we've got our PGA Tour player with his seven iron and his driver. I know this is a driver video, but I think it's important to talk about a few of the key differences between the two with regards to what we're talking about. So as you can tell, they're now getting into the differences between driver and irons. This is not directly correlated to what they were just talking about, but it is just some you know basic standard information you should have when you're thinking about differences between driver and irons. And I think this is always important because everyone always asks this in lessons with their clients, you know, what is the difference? Here's some main differences, let's get into it. So here it's set up with a seven iron. He has his shaft to lean about two degrees forward. Uh, with his driver, he's about two degrees in the opposite direction. So, so all they're referencing right now is going to be kind of the grip end and where is it relative to a perpendicular line. So if this was the ground down here, and then imagine having a line going straight up to the sky, that would be a perpendicular line. Where is that club shaft relative to the line? Is it matching that perpendicular line, which would be kind of a zero club shaft position? Is it slightly ahead of it? So what you're seeing with most of the irons, I should say almost all PJ Tour players when it comes to irons, you're gonna see the club shaft ahead of that perpendicular line. Now when it comes to driver, typically you're gonna see most people driver having that club shaft behind that perpendicular line. So this is a really important key point when it comes to the setup and it does make a whole lot of sense. You know, when you're hitting the irons, the overall idea is hitting down on the golf ball, covering the ball, maybe even getting the direction of swing slightly more on the left side. When it comes to the driver, typically you're trying to hit a little bit more leveler to slightly up on the golf ball. You're trying to add a little bit more loft in the direction of swings, if anything, slightly more out to the right. So getting the setup in terms of club shaft position and set up correctly to match the club you're using and what you're trying to do is vital and very, very important. And you know, this is why they're bringing it up in this video and how, you know, this is the reason why I wanted to also note that as well. Let's continue with some other differences here. So with both clubs, he has very little lean here at setup. And this is something we typically see with the best players. Now let's put up a box to frame his shoulders. We're going to drop this box down from his shoulder. So let's stop you here and just break down these boxes for you really quick. So as you can see, the box is made around the lead shoulder, so the outside part of the lead shoulder and the trail shoulder. And then it's also kind of going all the way down to the ground, and then it's making a little rectangle right here. So the main point that you're trying to look for is look at the lead shoulder relative to where the foot is with the iron. So you can see the lead shoulder is pretty much in the middle of the foot. Now, if you take a look at the driver and draw a line straight down, take a look at where the lead shoulder is relative to the foot with driver. And it's actually behind the foot in terms of the lead foot and more so towards the instep of the heel. So this is a really important point when it comes to the overall setup because with irons, typically we want more of that covering action that we just talked about. So we do wanna see that shoulder more so in the middle of the foot so we are not sitting so much up behind the ball basically is the main point here. Versus if you take a look at the driver here, we do wanna be hitting a little bit more up on the ball. So we do want the shoulders a little bit more behind the foot, which ultimately means that you're gonna get the sternum a little bit more behind the golf balls while it's set up a driver and that does match what we're trying to do with the driver. So those are some basic checkpoints when it comes to the differences between driver and irons. Let's continue forward because there are some points where they talk about impact positions with the body as well as the club shaft because that's really the main point of the video and this is a really, really crucial part for you guys to understand. We move him into impact. With the seven iron, he went from two degrees of forward lean. Now he's up to 12 degrees. So let's stop you here. So first they're gonna be discussing the iron so you can kind of see what the body is doing as well as what the shaft is doing. So if we take a look at the background here, this little yellow figure back here, this is going to be where this pro was at setup. And then the blue is going to be where the pro was at impact. So some of the notable differences between the two is first off, we can see that this blue figure is much more ahead of the yellow figure, right? So that means that the sternum as well as the center of the pelvis has definitely shifted forward at impact relative to where it was at setup, right? That is a very common theme to see with really good ball strikers. Now, another thing that they're gonna bring up is take note of this red line right here and then take note of where the lead shoulder is right here with the irons. So remember this red rectangular box was gonna be where the lead shoulder was at setup and then now we can see where the lead shoulder is at impact, right? So it's broken through that red triangle, which is going in turn with what I just said with the sternum and the pelvis. Everything is shifted forward with the irons, right? We're covering the golf ball. Hence, in turn, we are seeing that the handle of the golf club is ahead of the club head. And this is getting that handle first or that shaft lean that we all want with irons. And that is going to be taking loft off with irons, which again is what you do 
with irons. Now from here, let's jump forward to see what the Pro looks like with driver at impact because there are some similarities, but also some pretty big differences as well. All right, that's it for you guys on YouTube. But before you guys click off, let me give you some quick wrap up points. So when it comes to the major overall point that they're trying to talk about in this particular video is a lot of the amateur golfers have this perception of handle first. And that's something you need to get with driver. However, when you take a look at the pro golfers on gears, that's exactly the opposite of what they're doing. Typically, they're getting very little handle first or no handle first at all. And when it comes to trackman numbers as well, that definitely supports the data because typically the static loft of a driver for pro maybe is nine degrees, but most of these pros, when they're at impact, the loft that they're presenting is like 13 to 15 degrees. So that means they're adding on more loft and not taking off loft, which is gonna be really one of the only clubs in the bag that you're purposely trying to do that. Maybe if you're hitting a wedge, I guess, and trying to hit a flop shot, you'll try to do that as well. But for a normal full swing shot, driver would be one of the only clubs you go ahead and do that. So knowing that and keeping that in mind, if you wanna watch the rest of the video where we go over how to actually go about doing that and show you kind of some of the gears did as well, Check out our membership site so you can watch that whole video and learn a lot more. And then also make sure to sign up for the Cube Coach 6 Month Program if you guys want lessons. Like, comment, subscribe, share all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video.